from the former convent of the Good Shepherd overlooking Inwood Hill Park here in New York City. Welcome to Inwood Artworks On Air. It's where you meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes who make their home what we affectionately call Upstate Manhattan. I'm your host, Aaron Sims, and this is Live and Local. It's our podcast dedicated to showcasing the musicians of Upper Manhattan. We talk with them about what they do, and best of all, listen to them perform live in one of our favorite local venues. Today, we are excited to speak with musician Marchena. Born in Santo Domingo, Hector Marchena is a singer, songwriter, musician, guitarist, producer, and performer living in the Bronx in New York City. He began singing at five years old and has not stopped since. His music draws influences from Latin, tropical, and bohemian with a mix of rock, ballads, jazz, and pop and identifies his own style as alternative tropical bohemian. Hector intends to spread his music nationally and internationally and is releasing what promises to be a very enjoyable quality music that is food for the soul and enjoyed by Spanish and non-speaking Spanish speakers alike. We are thrilled to have him here today on On Air. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, enjoy Marchena. Llegado un nivel donde ya no quiero ni saber qué sería de mí si no te vuelvo a ver. No trajiste un manual ni un repuesto el cual usar si es que acaso algún día ya no te tuviera más. Y es que por más que lo pienso y a pesar de esto que siento, no puedo descifrar qué es lo que tanto a mí me gusta de ti, de ti, de ti, de ti. Yo quisiera que por siempre y para siempre tú te quedaras aquí, 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 aquí. Y que todos los días cuando me despierte, tú me digas mirándome de frente. Que tú me amas a mí para ir a la para. Es la pura verdad. La ciencia no puede explicar lo que siento por ti. No se puede comparar. Y no quiero ser intenso, no quiero ser absurdo. Solo quiero decirle que te quiero a todo el mundo y darte todo lo que te mereces. Y es que por más que lo pienso Y a pesar de esto que siento Aún no puedo descifrar Qué es lo que tanto a mí me gusta de ti De ti, de ti, de ti Yo quisiera que por siempre y para siempre Tú te quedaras aquí, 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 aquí Y que todos los días cuando me despierte me digas mirándome de frente que tú me amas a mí, a mí, a mí. Pa que lo bailen al pasito y pegadito. Lo que me gusta de ti, de ti, de ti, de ti. Yo quisiera que por siempre y para siempre tú te quedaras aquí, 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 aquí. Y que todos los días cuando me despierte, tú me digas mirándome de frente que tú me amas a mí.
hoy vengo ante ti hay tantas cosas que quisiera decir pero no me atrevo quiero decirte que si existiera una vida sin ti yo no la quiero Iluminaste mi mirada y me enseñaste que no hay nada que no podamos lograr si estamos juntos. Vuelvo a decirlo otra vez, pones mi mundo al revés y ya no quiero despertar un día más si no es contigo. A donde vayas iré, allí estaré y con mis labios sobre los tuyos te diré, contigo yo siempre estaré. Iluminaste mi mirada y me enseñaste que no hay nada que no podamos lograr si estamos juntos. Vuelvo a decirlo otra vez, pones mi mundo al revés y ya no quiero despertar un día más si no es contigo. A donde vayas iré, allí estaré y con mis labios sobre los tuyos te diré, contigo yo siempre estaré. Contigo yo siempre estaré. Vuelvo a decirlo otra vez, pones mi mundo al revés y ya no quiero despertar un día más si no es contigo. A donde vayas yo iré, allí estaré y con mis labios sobre los tuyos te diré, contigo yo siempre estaré. Siempre estaré Yo estaré Estaré uh, uh, Well, thank you, Hector. That was awesome. Thank you so much for being here today and playing for us. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Aaron, for having me here. Sure. I'm so glad. So tell us, what did we just hear? The first song um, that uh, we heard, that's uh, The T. The T is a very important song in uh, my set list, always. Um, first of all, because it represents a lot of, you know, where I was born in, which is the Dominican Republic. And uh, this song, the genre, it's a merengue. So that's pretty much um, a lot of what we are as a country, a lot of uh, what we are as a culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a very special song. I actually wrote it in Santiago, uh, Dominican Republic, uh, which is a province that is like more up north. Mm -hmm. It's like a more mountainous area than, you know, the capital, which is Santo Domingo, where I was born. And I believe that being, you know, all the way up there in the mountains is it, it definitely created that uh, environment that moment in order for me to uh write the song the song actually talks about those people that come into your life they teach you how to love them you get used to loving them however once they leave it's like they don't give you a manual they don't give you anything 
in order, they don't give you the tools in order for you to get over them and forget about them, you know, and just move on. So it's a little sad, but also speaks about those things that people like about their partners, about that special someone. And um, the fact that they don't teach you how to forget about them. But at the end of the day, it's all beautiful feelings. So that's what the song tries to talk about. For better, for worse, that's life, right? Yep, it is. <laughs> Definitely. And what is the second song you played for us? All right. So the second song, um, it's uh, called Un Dia Mas, which is One Day More. And it's a song that I wrote to my beautiful wife, beautiful, beautiful wife. And uh, it's a very special song because I wrote it two, exactly two weeks before we got married. So uh, that's the beauty of it. And when did you actually play it for her? Uh, one week before we get there. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure it's fine tuned, ready to yeah, go. Exactly. Okay. Like, let me, let me see if it makes sense. Yeah. And then, yeah. But, um, this song basically talks about those feelings that I felt two weeks prior to the happiest day of my life. How wonderful for you to be able to capture that. Yeah. Right. Definitely. And now forever captured that. I know, I know. She always asks for it on my shows. She's like, hey, sing my song. And I'm like, I mean, okay. <laughs> and you tell everybody, okay, I had to play a song. It's my <laughs> wife. And well, it's it's wonderful. And I can tell there's a lot of um, relationship uh, building in the songs. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and for both songs are somewhat love songs, yeah. right? Yeah. Different both kinds of, of love. Exactly. But, uh, but still the expressions of love and both have a kind of a, uh, and the second song too had more of a, a pop rock feel to it. Uh, definitely, you it's, know? it's pop rock, yeah. The the first one is merengue, which is more tropical. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the second one is pop rock. But the thing is like, it's interesting what you just said. I mean, the first one is like, I don't know what it is that I like so much about you. However, now that you left, I miss all of it. And right. you didn't teach me how to forget about you. That's right. the first kind of love based on, you know, that the first song is based in. Then the second one is like, I am two weeks away from, you know, being with you for mm -hmm. the rest of my life. Right. And this is how I feel. And I just put it out there. It's awesome, man. No, it's great. And it's great you'd be able to translate that. And it seems like a lot of your songs, though, you're a, a, have a, a, a pop, like I said, you're kind of... You, the tropical bohemian, you know, uh, feel to it all. Um, but it has this, uh, it does have like a real standard, you know, um, for back, I'm date, date myself for a second, a top 40 feel to them. Like they're very universal, they're very accessible. Like there's, there's not like crazy arrangements to them. It's, no. it's, it's the, your diverse chorus verse holds up quite well, I think for yeah. your music and you have these, this nice structure and it allows you to hang your emotions and the lyrics to really shine through on them. Thank you. And, um, it's actually really nice that you, you know, were able to notice that, um, because I wouldn't say I do it purposely, like, no, this is my intention, but I definitely have some intention of making my songs as digestible as possible. Mm -hmm. Cause the thing is that at the end of the day, you can create all these crazy arrangements, you know, and make it sound jazzy and, and, and complicated or let's say complex. Um, but then at the end of the day, you're making music for the people, you mm -hmm. know, you're making music, music for the masses, right. people that don't necessarily uh, understand inversions or crazy chords. Yeah. Uh, you're just trying to transmit what you're trying to explain to people you know, a feeling that I felt, put it into a song. And then when you show it to a four year old or to a, a person who has a, a PhD, they both understand and relate yeah. easily. Yeah. It's just about message sent, message received, right? And, yeah. and, and the funny thing is, you say this, and I, I, what I really like I said, not to beat a dead horse, but it's like, there's a simplicity and you're, you're saying too, it's like you're stripping away. You're not meant, you could have these crazy chords, but you choose not to, because this is the vehicle to relay these emotions. Yep. This is the vehicle to connect with your audiences yep. and all those four year olds out there who love him. And, <laughs> um, uh, when, and I, and I feel like this is, it's somewhat ironic. Uh, the fact that you have such, uh, astute musical background yeah. because you went to school for music, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so and so like you have you have you have the theory background. You yeah. have you know the stuff from an early age. You went to an academy, right, to study? Yeah, I went to an academy. I didn't finish, unfortunately. That's another story. I was <laughs> it's a I was, podcast. Yeah, I was not able to uh, finish for you know various reasons, uh, mostly funding. It's uh, a reason because you know. the thing is like just long story short, I was able to go to a music academy. Um, 
but it was with a program. Okay, so that program from the Dominican Republic was funding my scholarship, let's say. So the thing is, um, I remember in the year, between the year 2015, 2016, um, that program was just, I mean, they cut it off the budget or something like that. And um, the Dominican Republic actually uh, terminated terminated their relationships with um, international relationships with Taiwan and a couple other countries. And it was a whole thing. A lot of students actually had to go all the way back from Taiwan, which is like 10,000 miles away to the Dominican Republic with unfinished degrees. So um, a lot of that affected other programs that were being funded by basically the same kind of structure, right? So that's pretty much what happened with me. Wow. You know, at the end of the day, I was here studying music and I was like, I can't afford this without a scholarship. You yeah. Because the thing is like when you're here and you're studying full time, you know, you're going to school full time and that's all you're doing. Um, how do you, how can you, you know, possibly uh, afford uh, superior education, you know? And then it was harsh that I was not able to finish it. However, like you said, uh, the important thing is the musical background. Uh, the theory that makes you be able to apply your knowledge and your feelings. Right. And yeah, at the end of the day, it, it, it is what it is, you know. Can't change the past. And I, I feel a song coming on. Uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's, just, it's like coming right in. It's like, yeah. it's, it's at the point, if this was a musical, this is a, good idea this, this is a, a musical, <laughs> you would do your I want song now. And it's yeah. like, <laughs> and I came from Santo Domingo. You know, it's just like, it's all of a sudden, it all of a sudden it comes. But I'm serious though. It's like, in a way, it's like, life is the best you know resource yeah and uh, not that you want to sing about everything that happens to you in life but um you know uh it does inform though right and yeah uh, and however unfortunate circumstances can be at times now that really sucks and that's really yeah. but it's you know you've obviously have found your path though yeah. um and and not and even so, it actually makes your story, I think, even more inspiring. Yeah. The fact that your tenacity is to be, still be a musician and make it Absolutely. as your as your a, a, a freelance musician. Like, yeah, everyone's a freelance musician, folks. Even Bruce Springsteen is a freelance musician. Okay, everyone is trying to make it. Um, he's not okay though. And uh, you know, and the fact that you're still here doing it's a testament to you and your tenacity and keeping going. Absolutely. And honestly, I see I'm the kind of person. Sometimes you know. To my wife, this can be like really annoying. She's like, you're so positive. <laughs> How can you possibly see the positive in everything? And I'm like, here's the thing. I have two options. When something bad happens to you, yeah. you have two options. Right. You can just be depressed and stop doing what you were doing right. and just you know, feel bad about it. Right. Or you can see, okay, this is what I learned from it. Yeah. Okay? This, this is what I believe. This is what I learned from it. Let's just apply this to, because at the end of the day, it's like anything that happens leaves a teaching in your life. It's a teaching moment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Some other things are more complicated to, to uh, digest when they happen. Like at the moment, you know, the fact that I was not able to finish my right. music studies, it was horrible at the moment to me because this is all I am. Yeah. This is all I do. And this is all I've been doing ever since I can remember. Um, however, the fact that I wasn't able to finish gave me a lot of experience. Why? Because I started. So since I started, I learned, I was able to get the music knowledge, the musical knowledge, you know, in order for me to write beautiful songs based on my feelings or based on someone else's, you know, experiences, mm -hmm. I can make them, you know, in, in a, in a, in a, in a way that people, that they resonate, you know, right. so people can relate. And the other positive thing that I, that I, that I think is. I can always start all over again, if that makes sense. I mean, I'm 26 years of age. I can definitely, at a certain point, when I when I have the resources, I can just finish what I what I originally started. Absolutely, absolutely. There's always and also, time. And also, and there's teaching moments too, right? Yeah. It's like you and and you can't change the past. So how you respond to it? Yeah, you can grieve it. You can you know respond to it. Get angry. Absolutely. You can, you yeah. can do a lot of things, and those and I. Tell my wife the same things in, in a way. That, you know, all those are valid, but it's not going to change anything. Correct. So, so how do you move forward yeah. constructively? Um, and yes, you do have to feel it. You know, you have to feel it, yeah. and and there's and you there's validation in feeling it, um, positive or negatively, how it affects you. But to move forward, that's your it's your decision on how you move forward, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and to positively move forward is the is an alternative, but yeah. that's but that is 
hopefully the alternative, uh, the, well, the, the, the affirmative that people want to take to change their lives. And so, you know, that happens to you. Then you, you know, you're moving forward and you start writing songs for yourself. And when did you start writing your own songs? My own songs, I started when I was 17, exactly 17. All right. Yeah. So close to the time, maybe ish. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right yeah, there. Yeah. So it propelled you up and then, uh, um, and then you started, when did you come start playing in New York? I started playing in New York in uh, bars and venues and restaurants exactly in uh, 2018. Okay. Yeah. So kind of all happening close to the same time then. Yeah. I started writing my own songs in uh, when I was 17. So that was 2000. 13 2014 yeah. and then by 2018 i already yeah. felt you know confident enough yeah. uh that uh when i came back to new york then i was like okay let's let let me put myself up there yeah you know? yeah and so how does new york the, the scene because of you know you self probably play in the bar scene and mm -hmm. you also yeah. obviously played in the dr too yeah yeah is yeah. that you know, how does that shape your music? Because obviously we heard just two great examples of it. You kind of have the American sensibility of the pop rock stuff. Absolutely. And you have the, the tip of the hat to the merengue and yeah. everything else that yeah. comes out of the Caribbean sounds and the, the breezy, the tropical bohemian we talked about. <laughs> so um, just curious of like what, like when you're writing, um, how does it creep in for you? I'm going to be honest with you. Um the way I write, it's more, it's more Hispanic. It's more bohemian. When I mean bohemian is like, it comes from very passionate feelings, mm -hmm. you know, like the, the things that I write about, you know, uh, people leaving, breaking your heart or someone literally changing your life just because you have the, uh, privilege of waking up uh, by that person, you know, like next to that person every morning is like, I can write something so happy or so sad that both emotions, both feelings make you, you know, like water your eyes. It's like, wow. I mean, this is so deep. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I would say that my Hispanic heritage is more present in the way that I write. Mm -hmm. However, in the way that I arrange the songs and the way that I play the guitar, it's definitely more Americanized. Gotcha. In, in in the in the musical sense because i was musically educated here right, right, does that make right. sense yeah sure. so since i was musically educated here my music theory was learned here right uh my guitar playing was learned here uh the first musicians that i ever saw you know like in harlem and the shrine or or Silvana and all these, yeah. you know, all these musicians, this these subway musicians which is something that you don't see in in the dominican republic right i saw it here so I was like, wow, that's why musically speaking and the way I play and perform and the things that I do performance wise mm -hmm. are resonate more with my American music heritage. But the way I write and the way I express feelings in songs is more Hispanic. So at the end of the day, I just mix everything up and it's a beautiful product. Well. I couldn't agree more, and uh, and you're making your way all around the city. You started up playing up here in the Heights and yeah. the Wood and Riverdale, Marble Hill, Kingsbridge. That's the neighborhood, yeah. and uh, you're moving around now, or all across the Eastern Seaboard. And do you normally play solo? Do you like? I mean, I know, I know you've played with other people, but like when you're writing and like you're going to play out your own stuff, like do you usually play the trio or a band, or do you prefer to go solo? My more, my most common format is. Is solo okay. with me with you know with my guitar guitar I call it guitar and voice. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. So I call it guitar and voice. Uh, that's my most common uh, format. Uh, but other places have definitely a uh, bigger infrastructure, mm -hmm. and you know they would like to have like, hey, can you bring a band? Can you bring right. a trio? So to give you like the numbers, I could say that ten out of ten, maybe seven performances, maybe six to seven performances are me solo with my guitar maybe three or four are with a trio or a full band gotcha mm -hmm. and uh just to mention too coming out your first your recent single is day t right yeah that's so, that's that's coming out very soon yeah, yeah, yeah that's more than just a guitar though on it yeah yeah, yeah so yeah, that's yeah. been that's that's beefed up right oh some that big arrangements is, oh yeah that one <laughs> bro it's crazy that one has everything like, like it say. has it has so many different kinds of percussion so you get timberland to mix it for you or something <laughs> i mean it's like from what you played today to, to that it's like you yeah. it's symphonic yeah 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 no definitely like it has 
three to four different kinds of uh, percussion instruments. It has many guitars. It has keyboards. It has everything. You know, it sounds very tropical, very, very pop. Yeah. It, it sounds amazing, man. It's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful. Well, I only song. caught the clip you had on Instagram, so I'm looking forward to hearing the uh, the, the video thing, clip yeah. you did, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when do we expect like the whole thing? Oh, album-wise? December. Yeah. December. It's gonna be now in December. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Right and on. it's it's everything is ready. Don't get me wrong. I'm just <laughs> I'm the kind of person that I I, I want to do things the right way. Sure. I just don't you know I just don't want to upload it just because I want to upload yeah. it and put it out there. No, now is this going to be the single or the full single or is it going to be a whole album? Oh no, it's going to be the single. Okay, just yeah. the full single. The, gotcha. the album is definitely coming up in the future. Um, but I'm the kind of person that I believe that there is so much information out there right now. So mm-hmm. if I give you a full album, it's going to be more difficult for you to engage, you know, like mm-hmm. engage with it. Like you have a full-time job, you have a wife, you have so many responsibilities. Yeah. I believe it's easier for me to give you one thing like, Hey, Aaron, this is my three right. minute song. Yeah. Do you well, like it? There's oh, so much con- you said there's so much content out there and, 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 you know, to focus on one, to give people one thing to focus on. It's not a bad strategy. No, definitely not. And it, it's, it's what I'm doing is definitely strategically like it's, it's on purpose. You know, like I want to give you, Hey Aaron, this is my three minute song. Yeah. Oh, awesome. It was really cool. I liked it. I didn't like it. Whatever. Then maybe two months afterwards, I can, Hey, here's another three minute song. Oh, okay, cool. And then after I give you teasers. Yeah. I can come up with the whole thing. It's a great strategy, particularly for those out there who are do-it-yourselfers, uh, like Hector too. It's like you know, you think think about what you're selling, who you are, what your brand is, and how you want to get to people who are yeah. trying to, you know, consume your product. Don't get uh, me cause wrong, because it is a business, right? It is a business, and, and don't get me wrong, I love albums. Yeah. If it were up to me, I'd be making one album a year. Yeah. Um, and I admire an album as a project. Yeah. You know, as as a continuous um, series of of songs that you know build their way up to a bigger thing. Yeah, I, I love that. But you know, realistically speaking, it's hard. It's extremely time and energy consuming. It's extremely insanely expensive. Yeah. So you know, we gotta pace ourselves as artists, or like you said, like you said, uh, do yourself doers. Yeah. We got to pace ourselves. So yeah. that's how, how I'm doing it at the moment. Well, you're doing a great job. And uh, and I feel like we're going to have a little live album after this. So um, you have a couple more songs you want to share with us, right? Absolutely, man. So what are we going to hear next? All right. So the next song, um, it's uh, oh, another song that I actually wrote to my wife. Uh, this is a, uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of a sad story, but it's with, you know, it's, it's also impregnant. It kind of like. It, it gives you hope, like in, 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 in essence. And let me tell you why. The next song is actually called En Tu Nombre. That means like in your honor or on your name. Uh, but it's, it's mostly translated to in your honor. My wife, she's in the military. She's in the army. Okay. She's a specialist in the army. So um, a while ago in uh, January this year, she left for six months for army basic training, basic and specialized training AIT after that. So I was for, you know, by myself for a long time, you know, from January this year till June. Wow. Really, really tough situation. Do not recommend it. And I remember that the first month was the hardest one. And I was like, so sad. I felt so lonely. I went to Florida to my best friend's house to not feel so lonely. And I remember that when she was there for exactly a month at the time, let me tell you this, we were only able to talk for 10 minutes on Sundays. Wow. On the phone, not even well, phone call. Nothing. Your, your time is not your own in the military. Exactly. So not even video call, not even nothing. It was just on the phone, 10 minutes. That's it. Wow. So it was a really tough uh, first few months. Um, and the first month month was by far the hardest. And I remember I just grabbed my guitar and I did what I do best. Just channeled it. Let it out. And I did. And uh, this is a song that talks about those people that because of situations that are out of our control, they leave. But you also store this hope that they're coming back. Awesome. Very yeah. cool. Very so cool. enjoy it, guys. We're looking for it. What was and there's two songs though, right? Yeah, there is another song. Uh, the last song, it's uh, well, the next song that I'm gonna yeah, the last song that I'm gonna make. It's called 
uh, Un Dia Antes. So, One Day Earlier. And that's That would be the name of the song. It actually talks about those people that come into your life when you're not available. <laughs> okay. And this is more tricky because <laughs> it's like sometimes you may not be emotionally available, but sometimes you may not be actually available because you actually have a partner yeah. or a wife or a husband or a boyfriend, girlfriend. And then this people comes to your life and just sweeps you off your feet. And you're like, oh, what would have happened? <laughs> if, it's all the timing. It's like, exactly. It's about timing. So this is, this, this, this is actually pretty funny because it's like uh, one friend of mine. Uh, this is a song that I didn't write based on a personal experience, which is weird because usually most of, my, most of my songs are, are Bi based in my own experiences. Right, they're biographical. But yeah, but this song, I had this friend, right? A uh, high school friend. He had this girlfriend, but, you know, they just had a normal relationship. Nothing, nothing like rainbows and unicorns, just a regular uh, a boyfriend and girlfriend kind of relationship. And then he meets this girl that also had a boyfriend. And I don't know, they just developed, you know, feelings for each other. Never did anything because they were, you know, respectful to right. their partners. But they definitely talked about it uh, like a year afterwards. Like what would have happened? You know, like what if? So I wrote this song based on the what ifs awesome. of life. <laughs> Very cool. Once again, Marchena. Es exactamente un mes que no te veo. Hace ya más de diez noches que no duermo Hace falta ya los tragos que me he tomado Creo que la cuenta en aquel bar me la han cerrado Y por más que lo intento no dejo de pensar que no pero el día en que tú regresarás y te vas, pero tan aquí te quedas y por más larga que sea la condena siempre llega a su final y te vas, pero expirará tu ausencia puedo saborear la esencia de tu en cada trago que en tu nombre yo me doy Que en tu nombre yo me doy Nada brilla desde que tú te me fuiste Y hasta tus regaños me hacen falta Y aunque algunas copas puedan despejarme No pueden curar la herida que sufrió mi corazón Y es que no, tu recuerdo no deja de quemar Y aún espero el día en que tú regresarás y te vas, pero tan de aquí te quedas Y por más larga que sea la condena Siempre llega a su final Y te vas, pero inspirará tu ausencia Puedo saborear la esencia de tus besos En cada trago hay que tu nombre yo Y te vas, y 
Es increíble como la vida mueve fichas a su antojo, como nos tranca la jugada y sin salida me ha convertido en fiel sirviente de tus ojos. ¿Cómo te atreves? Me has vuelto adicto al roce de tu cuerpo Y aunque el tiempo de lo nuestro no es perfecto No se me quitan estas ganas de comerte a besos Pero nos adelantamos Nuestros brazos se afirman el calor de otra piel Yo no esperaba una tú Tú no esperabas un yo Dime qué hago con este amor Ay, que yo no te puedo dar Dime qué hago con estos besos Que al final a tus labios No puedo entregar Como quisiera poder despertar Y haberte conocido un poquito que sea un día antes y así poderte tener ¿Quién lo diría? Que el tiempo nuestro enemigo te convertiría Que a otras pieles y otras manos nos lanzaría Ves de atar a nuestras vidas y ver qué pasaría. Dime qué hago con este amor que yo no te puedo dar. Dime qué hago con estos besos que al final a tus labios no puedo entregar. Como quisiera poder despertar y haberte conocido un poquito antes. Aunque sea un día antes Un poquitito antes Uno Yo no esperaba una tú Tú no esperabas un yo Dime qué hago con este amor que yo no te puedo Those are great. Uh, thank you so much for sharing those with us. Uh, totally saw the relationship of the what ifs in that last one there. <laughs> um, so Hector, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Before we say goodbye, where can people go to find out more about you and your music? Yeah, every uh, streaming platform out there, especially YouTube, uh, Spotify, and iTunes. You can find my music over there. There is more music coming up really soon that we talked about earlier. In December. In December. Uh, video is ready, song is ready, and there is more coming up uh, earlier in uh, 2020, uh, early 2023. So yeah, really excited about all of it. Well, 
you heard them here, folks. The songs are here. You may not hear a few of them for a year, maybe. Who <laughs> never knows? But you're going to hear Day T and coming out in December. Uh, and we're thrilled to have Hector here in his music. Uh, check out Marchena wherever you can. And, uh, you know, support your local artists. So thanks again, Hector, for being here. Thank today. you so much for having me here, guys. I uh, This was a great talk. And uh, I don't know. It's always nice to talk about what you do and um, just kind of like hope that people can relate to it. And uh, thank you for having me here, man. You betcha. Uh, thanks again to Hector Marchena for joining me on this live and local episode of Inwood Artworks On Air. It's where I meet the musicians, filmmakers, writers, theater makers, and artists of all stripes to make their home here in northern Manhattan and above, because he's in Riverdale nowadays. <laughs> uh, so if you have a moment, please show us some love right now by rating and reviewing this podcast on Apple Podcasts. That really does help. Many thanks to the Church of Good Shepherd here in Inwood in New York City for hosting us and to HideSites.com for uptown promotional support. You can support On Air and all of our programming making a tax-free donation at InwoodArtworks.nyc backslash donate and also via Venmo. Uh, be sure to follow us on social media at Inwood Artworks to keep up with all that we do, including the Inwood Film Festival, Filmworks Self Fresco, Puppet Art Galleries, live performances, and so much more. And What Artworks On Air is proud to be supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council. From the top of Manhattan and the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Aaron Sims for Inwood Artworks On Air.